In this presentation, we are going to look at the various ways through which slaves were gotten during the transatlantic slave trade and also the organization of the trade. The various ways through which slaves were gotten during the transatlantic slave trade and as well the organization of the trade. In the history of the world, at the time in the history of the world, there was the unfortunate institution of a trade that was completely inhuman. And this unfortunate trade lasted close to three centuries. And in that trade, some Africans, a large number of Africans, we are commodities. Last number of Africans we are taken from Africa and sold into slavery to and transmitted or transported to the New World, where we are known today as the Americas, and elsewhere to parts of Europe mainly. The unfortunate trade witnessed the movement of over 10 million Africans from the African continent to the New World and Europe and some other parts even within Africa. It was unfortunate and highly inhuman. It was an unfortunate and highly inhuman business relationship or business activity. A lot of debates has been you know, conducted as to who is to be blamed or which area is to be blamed. Would the blame be on Africans? Would the blame be on Europeans? Or would the blame be on the settlers in the New World? Well, that is a debate I don't have a conclusion to. But let us look at the ways through which these slaves were gotten. One of them was through organized raids. Through organized raids. Some powerful empires and kingdoms and uh, powerful empires and kingdoms in Africa raided their weak neighbors, captured some of them and sold them to slavery. And this uh, raid and uh, transmission to slavery was facilitated by middlemen and most of these middlemen, as at that period, we are Africans. The kings or these kings got the, raided these slaves from their weak neighbors and sold them to the African middlemen. And these African middlemen transmitted or trans transmitted or transported these slaves to the coast, where they sold them to the Europeans. That's another. That's one source. Another source was through organized raids. Organized raids of non-state uh, actors. There were some banditry raidings that have occurred. Some powerful armed groups decided to raid weak political structures or weak political units or weak communities. And the people they captured were as well sold into slavery. Another source was through kidnapping. There were some kidnapping gangs at that period which or that conducted their kidnapping activities and never asked for ransoms. And the people they kidnapped were sold into slavery. And it became very rampant in the sense that people you know, we have been declared missing by families, and some of them we are traced, some of them we are not traced. The next one was through inter ethnic wars. Inter ethnic wars. Some wars fought at that period had the POWs or the prisoners of war sold into slavery. And for this reason, what would have been simple disagreement?
For this reason, simple disagreements that will have been resolved through dialogue or diplomatic means resulted to wars because by the end of the day, there will be, there will be prisoners of war that will be captured and sold into slavery. This generated wealth to, for a lot of persons within Africa and even some kings in Africa made words through this. Another was through the agencies of powerful oracles. Through the agencies of powerful oracles. Some agents of powerful oracles utilized the powers of this oracle or the perceived powers of this oracle to get a lot of persons or some persons which they sold into slavery. In some cases, when they look at a particular dispute brought to them, the person found guilty is punished by the claim that the oracle has eaten him or her. But in most cases, or in many cases, most of the people presumed to have been eaten by the oracle were sold into slavery. The next one was the concept of punishment for crimes. Some communities, kingdoms, empires punished some persons that committed very huge crimes by selling them into slavery. There are even cases of families that sold, that, this, that sold the, 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 their family black sheep in order to clean up uh, or uh, shame being brought to them by such a person. Well, the, 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 the issue was actually very uh, highly unacceptable. Then another one, which will be the last we have to look at, was that slaves were gotten through the payment of tributes. Some powerful kingdoms, empires that had vassal states at the time started requesting slaves as a, mat as a means of tribute payment. Before the institution, before the institution of the transatlantic slave trade, most of these powerful kingdoms were asking for agricultural produce. But with the lucrative nature of the transatlantic slave trade and the wealth made by some of the leaders, some of the rulers of this kingdom, some of them started requesting for slaves as a means of tribute payment by their vassal states. Well, unfortunately, a lot of Africans through this source ended up being sold into slavery through into by the means of the transatlantic slave trade. So let us go to the organization. The organization of the trade was in two categories or two phases or two perspectives. There was the African organization. There was as well the European organization. When this slave trade started, even all throughout the, the, the major part of the slave trade, apart from some areas, Europeans did not actually go into the hinterland to acquire the slaves. If not for some areas, the Congo area and then a few other areas that, Euro that Europeans ventured into, into the hinterland. But in most periods, the Europeans purchased these, these slaves from the coastal areas. Now the African organization was conducted by uh, slave dealers, African slave dealers or middlemen. These people we purchase these slaves from the hinterland through this means we've earlier discussed, chain them up and march them to the coastal areas. In most cases, the movement is through the jungles and most of the slaves were chained and made to trek with little and in some cases no food. 
Some of them that got so sick on the verge of dying were abandoned in the, uh, in, 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 in the forest for them to die. Why the ones that survived were marched down to the coastal or to the coastal areas? Where are they, are they were either sold to the, to the Europeans or they were made to wait for the Europeans to arrive. They were placed in very unhygienic um, facility, we refer to as the barracoons. And they stayed there waiting for the Europeans, and some level of food was given to them for them to survive. When Europeans come, if, they, if the Europeans arrive, when the Europeans arrive, the middlemen will uh, uh, sell these or sold these slaves to them. In some cases, the Europeans paid before paid earlier before coming. Maybe if they, when, when, when they arrive, they pick up the slave they got and pay for the next one upon which they will, you know, when they come, they pick those, those ones. In some cases, a payment made that was made in a particular year, the consignment was supplied in the coming year. They were, the Europeans used the trust system as a means of you know, making slaves available. They paid some of these African dealers early enough so that upon their arrival, they were sure of having those slaves made um, readily available for them to purchase or for them to go with. That was the unfortunate situation. Upon selling these slaves to these European dealers, the Europeans in connivance with the African dealers, we are made to make or made marks on the bodies of these slaves using hot iron. In most cases, marks of different European dealers. Marks possibly on the name of different European dealers. Even with the, the, the pains and the screening of these slaves, nothing really much you know, of uh, a pity was carried out by both the Europeans and the African middle men or the African slave dealers. Well, that was the African perspective. The European perspective upon purchasing these slaves, loaded these slaves into very filthy ships, unhygienic ships and arrange them in a very unhygienic situation. And these slaves were you know, made to be placed on structures, wooden structures, that were not suitable for them. They contain the, 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 the ships which the Europeans used in carrying these slaves were you know, properly equipped for this, for that purpose. They contain iron feathers or chains, food containers, feeding bowls, whips, chisels, designed specifically for the use in knocking out front teeth so that any slave who tried to go into hunger strike or who tried to starve to death Will be forcefully fed through the opening or through the teeth opening. While in the ships, the slaves were tied in groups with neck and ankle chains. They were left bare bodied and forced to sleep on wooden shapes. After each of them was you know, fasting or, uh, you know, or put it to the floor, which in most cases with iron bar. In the ships, they were, the slaves were tied in groups with necks and ankle chains together. They, you know, 
could not ease themselves, but we are allowed to do whatever thing they, they have to do where they are. And this, in most cases, degenerated to diseases like dysentery, you know, and common and some other infections. Precautions we are as well taking to avoid this less committing suicide. But there's a contrast to this. In a situation whereby a slave became so sick, and Europeans found out that the slave might not make it. In some cases, they were thrown overboard. The death rise of slaves in a, in a ship actually meant the loss on the part of the European dealers. They carried out two contrasting activities. When upon landing in the New World or in, in Europe, these European traders, European dealers, in most cases, we advertise. Uh, in some cases, they use newspapers, even even newspapers, to advertise the number of slaves they have and the center for the bidding or the auctioning. The buyers or the owners of um, mines and plantations that needed these slaves will be invited to come and bid. Traders who bought these slaves in West Africa profited. And that was why when there was move to abolish the slave trade, some of these dealers greatly worked against such move. Well, this was the structure of um, or the organization of the transatlantic slave trade. Very unfortunate, but it was an event that happened that affected Africa and at the same time re rearranged some structures in the world. If you are watching us for the very first time, please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification icon so that anytime we have a new content, you will be one of the earliest persons to be notified. Thanks for still being part of our channel.